Welcome back. While we are all waiting for Godot's mythical 4.0 update, the devs have been hard at work adding and backporting features for update 3.4. Let's get right into it. One of the most hyped changes coming to the 4.0 update is Occlusion Calling. Occlusion Calling is a feature that disables rendering of objects when they are not currently seen by the camera. But you won't need to wait until 4.0 to get improved 3D performance. Godot 3.4 is getting its own version of Occlusion Calling rooms and portals based occlusion calling. It must be manually set up. You will divide your 3D game levels into a series of rooms, and then you place the portals, which are openings between the rooms that the camera can see through. So except for where the portals are placed, Godot will only render objects that are inside the current room, which should greatly increase performance. And this system also allows you to turn off activity outside of the gameplay area. Obviously, the portal and room system works well for indoor environments, but it's still technically possible to use this system for outdoor environments. But design considerations must be taken to work around the system's limitations. The next change is the addition of frame delta smoothing. Delta is a variable that Godot passes into the process and physics process functions. It is the amount of time that has passed since the last frame. By using the delta, you can separate your player's movement from the frame rate, which ends up being a smoother experience. Currently, delta is calculated by querying the operating system's timer every frame. The problem with this method is that it is subject to error. Frame delta smoothing looks to avoid these errors by replacing the OS timer with estimating the refresh rate delta based on input frequency. This should give smooth, stable deltas in high-performance, v-synced games. Games that run poorly with lots of dropped frames may not benefit from this change. The refresh rate estimator can take a good 20 seconds to take effect on startup. Keep this in mind when testing it out. And just because smoothing is enabled does not mean it is currently running. The algorithm decides when smoothing is appropriate. For those of you who work in 3D, the 3.4 update also comes with the option to clean and simplify the convex hull generated from a mesh. The cleaning process removes duplicate and interior vertices using the bullet algorithm. The simplifying process actually modifies the geometry using a volumetric hierarchical approximate convex decomposition algorithm. In this example shown, the original mesh is highly tessellated, so these optimizations help out quite a bit. Soft shadows are being added to the CPU light mapper. There's already been some great looking scenes made using Godot's baked lighting, but the addition of soft shadows should allow artists to make 3D environments in Godot look even more realistic, especially on lower end hardware. The procrastinators among you will enjoy this change. Godot's theme editor is being overhauled. The screenshots you are seeing are from the 4.0 build, but most of the overhaul was able to be backported to 3.4. You will be able to customize a the theme directly in Godot and see the changes in real time. By the way, did you know that Godot editor is actually built using Godot's own control nodes? That's right, Godot is built using Godot. Another cool feature coming to Godot 3.4 is exporting projects as progressive web apps or PWAs. From the end user's perspective, a progressive web app is downloaded and installed onto their phone as if it were a native standalone app. When the user visits the web page, they will be presented with the option to install your application on their phone. Once installed, your Godot project won't run within the mobile browser. It will have its own app icon on their home screen and it will launch in a dedicated window. Some major improvements are also coming to Godot's physics. After a lot of testing, both the move and collide and move and slide functions should be more reliable. Move and slide's collision detection should be more accurate, and move and collide should no longer slide on slopes. There's also been improvements on moving platforms. The current logic in 3.3 applies the platform velocity to the body velocity. However, mixing those velocity causes issues. This fix applies the movement in two steps. First, the platform movement, and then the body movement. These changes actually close multiple opened issues regarding Godot's physics, so hopefully the behavior is a lot more consistent now. This changes the default lossless texture compression to the WebP format. There is still the option to revert back to PNG compression if that's what you'd prefer. 
For textures, both PNG compression and WebP compression are lossless. Initial testing shows that WebP results in a 43% smaller file size, but at the cost of 20% slower load times. Godot's depth of field effect has been greatly optimized. Depth of field is a visual effect that simulates a real-life camera's focus range, where objects that are too close or too far away from the camera will be blurry. So in 3.4, this change will combine the blur amount calculations in the shader. This should be much more efficient and produce a very similar visual result. There might be some slight variations when there's a crossover between an object out of focus in the foreground while the background is out of focus as well, but visually the effect is overall the same. In 3.3, the visual server calculates object depth from the camera and then overwrites that information with shadow data. This means that basically incorrect information is being sent to the renderer. And this problem is most apparent with translucent objects with shadows enabled. This fix moves the unused camera depth calculation to after the shadow calculation. Now the correct information will be sent to the renderer, which will now properly sort objects based on camera depth. There's a ton more changes coming to the 3.4 update. I will link the full list down in the description, as well as a link to download the 3.4 beta so you can try it out for yourself. What change are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel, and thanks for watching.